it, it guarantees you a trade in. Am I talking to somebody? It, 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 it gives you the opportunity to get back whatever was a wrong purchase or whatever tried to be defected in your life when you was actually purchased by the blood. The blood is a receipt. It's a guarantee. Hallelujah. It's a receipt. Amen. Then when you get the receipt back, you got the ability to go back to that counter of the kingdom of God and say, I need to trade in for a new heart because the one you gave me is defected. Am I in there anywhere? They say they had a cancer in my body, but you didn't design me to have cancer in my body. Am I talking to somebody? The doctor said I had this, I said that, but let me read what the agreement said. It said on the agreement what you gave me when I purchased this body, when it was purchased for me. It was purchased under the name of Jesus Christ. It gave me a guarantee. Anybody know that you get something that actually do you want a three, four year guarantee? But Jesus gave you a life guarantee Amen. in the name of Jesus. And he said that whoever call upon my name in a time of need, that I'm not I'm just a mercy God, but I'm a blessed God to deliver them for whatever may be that's in them. Am I in there anywhere? And then when you go back to the county, you got to understand that he said, let me read the, let me read the, 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 the title to you. Let me read the, the inclements of this very receipt says that it says that, 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 that he was wounded for my transgressions, that he was bruised for my iniquities. He said, the chastise of my peace was upon him and by his stripes I'm already here. Baby, I got a guarantee. And on top of the guarantee, I got the word to say. I got the power to call things that be not though if they were. That means I can revoke this cancer condition. I can revoke this illness that's in my body. I got the power through the revelation and the omission to the power of God to get back that what the enemy tried to take from me because I got a command that's coming from the kingdom of God that guarantee me everything that I need. He goes over here in the book of John, over here in John, in the ninth chapter, in the first verse. He says, Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now, notice what it says. And the disciples asked him. The disciples were something else. But even though they was learning like we learned it, they was learning. The disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Now, just because you see something wrong with somebody doesn't mean that they sin. Sometimes God calls things to happen and people like to get the miracle, get the testimony about it. Them. Amen. Am I saying something to somebody? Are you in a condition in your body? You don't seem to die to get you bad diagnosis. But God said, if you can just reach out, but it seems like you're going through the shadows of the valley of death. All I'm doing is building you a testimony to build up in somebody else's life, to bring them out of whatever it is that they're in. The Bible declared the key that when the disciples begin to ask them, who sinned? And Jesus said, no man. He said, no man or his parents. No man or his parents that was born blind, you know. He said the sin, this is a man that, 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 that he said this is a, this, a, this sin to this man or his parents that was, was born blind. And he said, Jesus answered, said neither. Now the disciples asked a very distinct question. I mean, because they didn't know. Because when you look at things from a physical standpoint of view, you just don't know. You just really be ignorant about stuff because you ain't just mm-hmm. in the spirit. The disciples had a right to ask the question, Lord, because Jesus believed that whenever somebody, well, Jesus didn't believe that, but whenever they see somebody with conditioning in the body, they thought they may have committed some kind of sin. No, not rightly so. Yet because you see somebody with a condition in the body, they didn't have to sin. Jesus used that particular person as a testimony to bring somebody out of the condition that they're in. Is anybody ever had high blood pressure? Anybody had a cancer in their body? Anybody had something they told them they can't get rid of in the name of Jesus? God said, by the stripes and by the power of the guarantee, I can transform that word. And I can mesmerize the mind of any individual to make them feel other than what I declared that's coming from the kingdom of God. I'm giving you some information here in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to show you how you need to get healed. That you need to stop listening at these soothsayers. These people that want to put their paws on you, rub you down with oil. The Bible says they him that believe all things are possible. You don't need nobody to put their knuckles on you. Am I in there anywhere? You go home and you grease yourself down. If you sit before God and you understand what the book of Jeremiah said, that I got to amend my ways in the midst of the condition that I'm in. That I believe according to the word of God that he already gave me the promise that by his stripes I'm here. I got a guarantee to come from the kingdom of God. And it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You, you, you're dealing with all these things, all this wishy-washy stuff. These jinky things that's going around. That's why I don't deal with a lot of shaky people. Because you can't have everybody up around you. They do one thing in a minute and something else the next day. Now, you can't deal with people that's up and down. A lot of folk. You know, they want to climb up the ladder and climb down the ladder. You're going to be up, stay up. If you're going to stay down, stay down. You know, don't come around here with that, all that kind of stuff. I can't deal with that kind of stuff. Because we're trying to move somewhere in the kingdom of God over at Harvest House. And we need dedicated people to go forth and do the word of God in the season which we're in. The disciples asked him and said, that, Master, who sinned? This man or his parents? And he said, did this man or his parents sin? Jesus said, this man was born blind. Jesus answered, said, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but the work of God 
should be made manifest in him. Am I in there anywhere with anybody in the name of Jesus? The Bible goes on in the four verses. I must do the work. <laughs> I must do the work of the one of him that sent me. When we go back to the word of God, you go to the book of John 14. You look at John 14 around that 10th chapter, 10th verse, excuse me. 14th chapter, 10th verse to the 11th. Verse, you heard the word of God declare and decree that he said that I, he said, I come to do the work of the one who sent me. I, am I in there anywhere? When you go over to the, well, I don't want to lose you here because I want you to catch this. And I want you to turn your Bibles. I want you to look at that word over there in the book of John 14. Around that tenth verse, he said, "He said, believe it not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but I speak the one that dwelleth in me. He does the work. Am I in there anywhere?" Jesus said, "I didn't come to do anything, but through the power of God is delivered unto me as being His Son and Messiah, and to prove to you, according to the book of Hebrews twelve, that I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I come to do the work of the one who sent me. If you don't believe in the one who, if you don't believe in me, believe in the one who sent me." Jesus declared a word according to the kingdom of God. There is not one weapon formed against you that got the ability to prosper. Jesus declared the word that even over in the fourth book of book over in the fourth verse of John nine, he says that that I must do the work of the one who he, I must do the work of him that sent me. While it is still day, cause night is coming. And when no man can work, he goes on over in the fifth verse. He say, no longer as I am in the world, but I am of the light of the world. Am I talking to somebody? I come to light up some stuff. I come to set some firecrackers to some stuff. To light up the demons that's in you. To show you that through the illumination and the power of God, you got the power to be delivered from whatever the enemy may try to come against you with. Let, 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 let the woman of God, let me let the co-pastor go to this fifth part, or this sixth part of the verse, and read it on down, and listen to what he's saying. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash, go wash in the pool of Salaam. No, no, no. The, the pool of Salaam, as he said, to go wash in the pool of Salaam, which is by the interpretation means sent. That was a command that was given. Now, you got to catch this revelation of this because this, you got to catch this how it is because Jesus healed his brother in two stages. The first time he healed him, when he called out to Christ, Christ spit on the ground and healed him by the spit. He spit on his anointing. He spit on his anointing. Am I in there? God was healed by him. He such the spit of his anointing. He spit on the glory. And he put it on his brother's eyes. And then he commanded the word to go to him to Salome that he may be healed, that he may receive the second part of the healing. The first part is when he spread in the clay and then he rubbed it on the man's eyes. And then he told the man, he gave him another command. He said, now that I spit on your eyes and put the clay on your eyes, then I want to send you to that very river, which is called the Salome, which is a word in the Hebrew called sent. And he commanded and did everything that the word of God has said. I believe I'm speaking to somebody this morning. When God give you a structure to do something and you have cock follow it, don't expect to get the healing that God has to come to you. He told the man to go and wash. And when the man obeyed and did everything that Christ told him to do, the man came up out of the water and then he looked around. And what did he say over there, woman of God, over in the seventh verse? What did he say? So he went and washed and he came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Hmm. They looked at him in a different way. But even when you take this same scripture, I'm getting to where I want to show you something here. Because there's two different types of verses of the men that Jesus healed blind people in the Bible. We talk about so many different areas in the Bible. We talk about when it came to Bethesda. We go to the book of Mark over there. And I want to push y'all too fast. I want you to stay with me. When you go to the book of Mark and you look over. Now, we're going to still stay with John. But I want you to catch something. When you go to the book of Mark, you look at Mark 8 and 22. And it says that he came to Bethesda. And he being blind. He said being a blind man in him, he besought him to touch him in his eyes. Now, this man wanted him to touch him because he knew what the anointing was there. As it says once again in Mark 8 and 22, he said he came to Bethesda. Then they brought a blind man unto him, besought that he would touch him. That they believed when they brought him. Ain't there something about being around some believing people? That if I take you to this man of God, you can be healed or whatever is in your life, whatever you're going through. No, I'm not going to take you for the orchestration, the design of the building. I'm taking you because of the anointing that's up in the house. 
in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we go into the house of God for the wrong reason. We go because of the accolades of the structure, because of the man that's behind the pulpit got so many names out in the community. But God said, I'm about to do a new thing. And that's going to come through the faith that was in you. It goes on over in Mark uh, 8 and 23. It said when he took the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the town. Why did he lead the blind man out of town? Because we read the word of God over in the book of Mark, over there, Matthew, I believe 11 and 21. Jesus pronounced, he pronounced a curse on that town. Because of the rebellion, because of their unrepentance. But Jesus couldn't heal him in it because he already come out, he already pronounced a blessing, a, a curse on that city. So he can't go back. See, God's word won't go back void. So he had to lead the man out of the town. When he led the man out of the town, which he already placed a curse on, and when he they say when he had spat on his eyes and he put his hands on him, he asked him, he said, he said, when he asked him, he said, if you saw. You know, what, 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 you, what, what you see? What, 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 ask him, if, if you saw, did you see right? That, that when you look at uh, 8 and 23, he said he led him out of town. He said then he spit on his eyes and he put his hands upon him. And he asked him if he saw not or if he saw aught, if he saw anything. In other words, what he's telling you. Did you see anything? And notice what the blind man said in the 24th verse. And he looked up and he said, I see men as trees. You got to catch this revelation because God do things in a two store in a two stage position. Sometimes when you go back to the doctor, get something the first time, it might not be the diagnosis that you wanted, but through the glory of God, through the promise of what he created, what he promised for the kingdom of God, it's got to come to full fruition because the God will declare the creed according to the book of Isaiah 55, 11, that God's word will not go back void. When we take the word, we go to the book of Numbers 23, 19 to 21. God declares the decrees of word that am I a God that I should lie or am I a son of any man that I should have to repent? I have been given a commandment to bless and I cannot reverse it. The man said he looked at man he saw man looking like trees. Now Jesus said no you're looking at the wrong thing. He goes on down there again in the 26th verse G went back and he told the man he said go wash again and the man came up in the later part of 25 excuse me and he looked up and he restored and he saw man is clear but it goes on in the 26th verse and he sent him away to his house saying neither go into the town or tell anyone in the town because he can't go back to tell them anything because they're going to believe the miracle anyway. They may stone him because a curse was put up on that town because of their disbelief. They didn't believe anything. So why are you going to go back and confess something to an unbeliever? Amen. You will tell it to somebody else. You need to go tell it to nobody else. Am I talking to somebody this morning in the name of Jesus? The Bible declares and decrees when you think about the word of God, you look about how how that 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 the that the legal right verses of manifestation. And when we go over to woman God, when we go over to uh, 1 Peter 2.24, but she's going over there, but I wanted to read what it says in 1 Peter 2.24. But the Bible clearly, it clears that Jesus stripes. Uh, and we were healed. Even when we look at First Peter two twenty four, we look at the book of Isaiah uh, fifty three and five. This this it says this a plethora of scriptures that believe that Jesus done things. Even when we look over the book of Mark, we look at the book of John. We see the healing of Jesus taking place. I mean, the healing that Jesus put on people taking place. Now, you ain't got to believe other than something somebody say. Now you believe in healing. Well, woman, God, what did he say over there in First Peter two twenty four? Now notice what he says in First Peter two twenty four. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. The price has already been paid. The same reason that the world won't be saved even though Jesus died for their sins. We must reach out and take what Jesus gave us to what faith. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Y'all getting the word here. Y'all better stay with this thing because some of y'all going to look out and move away from this world and go get you some entertainment. But the scriptures declare the creed that you get all the worship you need, but the word ain't complete until the, 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 the service ain't complete until the word go forth. And you can worship all day, but the word has got to be spoken. That's a spoken word. That's why most people don't have not been healed for what condition they are in in their bodies because they don't go out. We, we, see, we as men and women, we got to go out and proclaim the gospel. We got to believe and understand that we're entitled as been believers. Am I talking to somebody in the name of Jesus? When we go over there, the woman of God begins to read over in the book of Mark 9. And she's going to look over in the book of Mark 9. And we're going to look over in the book of Mark 9. And we're going to look around that 10th, uh, around that uh, 19th verse of Mark 9 and uh, 20. 
I think Mark 9 and 20. Let's look at the 19th verse, Mark 9 and, uh, 9 and 19. And let's start from there. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at the illustration of this right here. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? 